go, go, go! Push the cart! Let's talk about me! <laughs> Come on! Mark, the jump You're supposed to spam it! Oh, <laughs> let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Let's go! We're the best at Super Smith! That's why I won Evo, kids! <laughs> no, not that melee. This melee. TF2 has a rather large slew of weapons, ranging from a shotgun to a rocket launcher and even an Atari controller. With all these amazing armaments of mass destruction, it takes a real idiot to stare at the literal slab of meat and say, yeah, this, this is good, this will work fine. This is an issue most first-person shooter games will come across. How do you justify using an extremely short-range weapon that requires you to be directly beside the enemy when both you and they have a gun that can do the job without the hassle of walking over? Games like CSGO and Valorant resort their melee option, the knife, to be less of a weapon and more of a movement option, making you get into position faster. It isn't really meant for killing people, unless you're someone like me. Like, what is this timing? Like, actually, what is it? Last player standing. You can get an actual gun. I got the spike. <laughs> oh my. Most other FPS games like Overwatch, Call of Duty, or Apex Legends resort their melee to a button press rather than an actual selectable weapon, and as a result it's more so a last resort for when you're in close range of an enemy and can't afford to reload. These button press melees come out nearly instantly too, meaning you don't have to worry about having to switch from your primary to your melee, it's always readily available for when you need it. And then we reach TF2, which has to create 9 unique melee weapons and systems for its 9 classes. I'm just kidding of course, because Valve just copy pasted everyone's melee options and called it a night, leading us to an interesting problem in the future when it comes to balancing and actual use of these melee options. Much like how TF2 has organized its classes around being offense, defense, or support, we can fairly easily organize them into three categories for melee, being primary. These classes have their melee weapon designed around being their primary means of dealing damage. Last resort, these classes have their melees designed to be used when all else fails and there's simply no other option but to smack them around a bit. And finally, the problematic group, the no use. These classes have no practical usage for their stock melee options and as a result provide some rather problematic balancing issues when it comes to their unlocks. Stock weapons are typically supposed to be generalized for any and all situations. They don't specialize in anything, making them the most reliable weapons to use. For example, the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher, which focuses both on offense and defense, versus the Scottish Resistance, which is primarily situated for defense. But in what situation do you really need to use your melee? Scout has a scattergun, which excels in close range combat and has a higher damage output compared to his melee. Pyro's flamethrower and heavy miniguns are also the same, and that's not even mentioning the fact that they have a shotgun by default, which also deals more damage compared to their melee options at point blank range. If Soldier has the gunboats equipped, he doesn't risk as much self-damage, making him free to shoot his feet at close range enemies for a mass of 105 damage, greatly surpassing the 65 he would have done with his melee. Soldier also has a shotgun by default, making this pointless. The only time any of these classes would be required to use their melee weapons is if they were to run out of ammo for both their primary and secondary weapon, which is a rare thing to do. Unless you're mindlessly spamming air blasts, rockets, or just blindly firing at nothing, you're also then deliberately not killing enemies and picking up their ammo packs, not picking up map ammo packs, and not hanging out by a dispenser. It's quite hard to ever say you're ever going to fully run out of ammo unless you're deliberately trying to do so. And as a result, the stock shovel, bat, fist, and fire axe are nearly completely pointless already. And that's even before you mention unlocks. When gauging a weapon's potential in TF2, most people use a system measuring its combat capabilities such as extra damage or health back on kill, and its utility capabilities such as faster movement speed or damage resistance. For Scout, it looks something like this. So what about the stock bat? Where does this land up on the chart? <sighs> oh. Oh god. <laughs> Jesus. 
keep in mind that this combat rating is compared to all other melee options as well, not even primary or secondary weapons, which makes most of the combat-oriented melee weapons even worse than they actually are, and the utility ones even better. So how do we actually boost the potential and usage of the stock melee weapons? Unique types uh, or sounds they make imagine hitting someone with bat that says boom Make the melees do a bit more damage I guess. Also give right. the cable like one more damage uh, so there is at least a chance you can one shot like classes again. Your health lowers the switch Fuck. speed. Fire rate make the fire axe like goddamn down. scorpion from Mortal Kombat lol. That one, uh, fuck I didn't think this through. Um, oh hold on a second, this one isn't entirely terrible. I mean, the 100% crit chance thing is, but allowing only stock melee weapons to deal random crits is still better than nothing. Melee weapons already have an increased crit chance of 15%, compared to the 2% chance other weapons carry. This chance can be increased by dealing damage within a 20 second time period, capping out at a maximum of 800 damage and a crit chance of 60%. Allowing stock melee weapons to randomly crit makes them a tad bit better when compared to their alternatives, which also are designed to be stronger in certain situations. Of course, this doesn't really fix any massive problems. Melee weapons like the Power Jack or Gru are still going to be the meta since movement is always going to be more important and prevalent than a possible close range insta kill. And in terms of how impactful a change like this could be to the game, or even how necessary it is, well, it's, it's fairly weak. I'd much rather see objectively bad weapons like the Sharpened Volcano Fragment, which is weaker and worse than stock in every way, be balanced into something actually usable before focusing on the problem with the stock melee weapons themselves. It's quite a minor issue in the grand scheme of things, but still, it should be brought up and placed into consideration for when it comes to balancing weapons in the future. Thanks to Mooskai for demonstrating the true art of war back there, real smooth. Also yes, this video was rather short, more so a teaser of the much higher quality and production of my videos moving forward, and what we're gonna call Season 2 of Space Guy's Show. Don't worry though, because the next video is actually gonna be considerably longer and much more in-depth. 